What's up, guys? You're tuned into the Scandal After Buzz TV After Show. This is Season 5, Episode 16, The Miseducation of Susan Ross. Let's go live. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. All right, guys. This is your Gladiator Nation fan. I was trying to say something creative. I can't even think that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, uh, we are here. I am Emil Innes Jr., joined by my fellow gladiators. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Cornelia. And I'm Bam Erickson. What happened to the music? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Where are, where are music at? Dang. Where are music? Oh, there we go. And while that's playing, you see Sophia's not here. She is celebrating her birthday out of town. So... <laughs> Send her some love. We miss you, Sophia. Um, but let's go ahead and break down this episode. Um, oh, we got light flicker now? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's go ahead and start with the debate. Remember last week we ended with the start of the debate, and now we actually go into the debate. Yes. Um, so we have... Um, okay. Y'all want to see something funny? Every time Hollis speaks, sometimes instead of writing Doyle, I'll put Trump. No, I, I put Hollis Doyle to Donald Trump. I put Trump said we don't need the murderers and the thugs. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, he, that's what he, he said. He didn't say that, though. Okay. Um, so, anyway, with this debate, we had uh, Hollis Doyle, we had Susan Ross, and we had Melly. Um, it's really interesting change of pace the way they started the episode because it was just refreshing to see them out of their normal elements like a completely different set like I enjoyed it so we have um, Susan who is freezing up and I put WTF Susan what is wrong with you um, Hollis attacked Melly's marriage um, he said take your pick for one of these Bettys if you want somebody who just is going to do handshakes and smile um, he talked about Olivia running the campaign and then they went to break the thing that bothered me with that, though, is you remember after they went to break, because Susan cut her off and said, you know, we'll do it after. They didn't address it when they came back. You Not Susan, but you mean... Uh, uh, Sally. Yeah. But she never she never got to address it, which kind of... That's how it usually goes. Yeah. You know, one, if you don't get it in when it's time to get it in, then you missed your, your remark. Very true. But uh, Melly was in the middle of trying to speak, and um, Sally actually cut her off. Yeah. So. And that's the thing, like... Uh, sh- do you think in that moment she could have been a little more serving to still try to push through and talk or would that not have you can try but then you risk seeing being viewed as a certain a type of True. candidate you, it's all a game yeah it's all a game and it's all about the impression you make and how people view you so if Melly would have pushed 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 then they're like she's too aggressive and she fell back she's yeah. too soft and um and Sally obviously is favoring other someone other than yeah. than, than Mel. yeah she's definitely not neutral in this situation <clears throat> before we continue did you guys um enjoy the episode what do we think it was entertaining i was entertained at certain points of the the you know the show when they things happen and certain people are in the same room together i get a little uh, disgusted oh but my gosh. It I'm going to assume you're talking about uh, Lizzie Bear and David not no. Fitz and Olivia <laughs> what about you ma'am um <laughs> This is a, a reason why I choose not to watch um, the previews, which I think next week's preview was really stupid. But anyway, um, <laughs> oh my god, I can't. I was expecting, I was like expecting it to like really go down in this debate, and the debate was only you know two minutes, and then after that, the episode slow. Uh, it just from there just started to get slower and slower and slower and slower, and I thought the episode would have been this high fast paced thing because we're forced to watch these stupid previews for next week where they hype it all up where it's about to be something else and then it's not and it's not what it is you know i kind of wouldn't have minded if the episode made the debate in the show long oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. like i thought it was gonna be the whole episode yeah, yeah like them actually debating because they I could have, have all. I think they could have done it where they had the debate as the main focus and then showed other stories outside that, like weave them in and how it parallels. Mm-hmm. And they kind of did that a little bit because remember during the commercial break, uh, Fitz called Susan. That was the first thing. He said, you only need that one moment, that one punch, which a little inspirational moment. Mm-hmm. Anybody in life, that's that's really that's really all you need. You just need that one moment. Continue. It's true. It's true. Um, the whole thing with Susan. Which part? Her speech? Her that speech. That was very nice speech, I enjoyed man. her speech. It was, it was a cute speech. Cornelia was applauded. Yeah. That was good. It was a good speech, but 
one speech should not determine you being the winner because she ain't said shit the whole entire time and she was freezing But we up. only saw a portion, so that could have been the moment where she hit her stride once she got yeah, out of there. Yeah, some but people she, win but, and don't say nothing at all. Let's talk. Let's take it to real, real debate. You ahead. can talk a bunch of BS and win the debate. And win. Yeah, but she had at least three opportunities that I can recall, two or three opportunities where she was asked a question and she only answered yes or no. You, but you did, she ain't win that. Fuck I get no, that, no, but I will that. say, I will say you have to think about the public mm -hmm. and what resonates with the public and what people will be talking I about next day. But that determines, the that the, the public is who's voting though. Yeah, but that's And that's bullshit. who determines what wins the debate. So well, that you moment. you tell that to everybody voting for right? a certain candidate exactly. who ain't shit. Exactly. No, no, no. Well, I, I get what you, well, when you're talking about the real life situation, um, that's a little bit different only because Susan, she, Given that one speech, you still don't under you still don't know her views on certain questions because when she was asked certain things, she said yes. But that's what I'm saying. I no. honestly think I honestly think because we literally only saw a snippet. Y'all know how long debates actually go. We saw yeah. a snippet. Mm -hmm. I think after that moment, she really got into it, and there must have been something where that moment put. You know how it is, like mm -hmm. when you're struggling, mm -hmm. when certain singers are struggling on stage, when the rest of the group is fine, and then that singer struggling. And then once they get past that moment, then they're like, oh, I'm good now. I feel like I'm part yeah, of the group. Yeah. Again. Get, you catch a win. Get, you who y'all talking step. about? I don't, I don't know who you no, no, talking no about. Names, right? I wasn't talking about nobody specific, and okay. if I was, I'll say it offline. But ah! what, <laughs> I'm just saying. So she was, she was lacking. She was struggling. I just felt like she had to get in her moment. And if y'all know who I'm talking about, don't tweet me because I don't need nobody coming after me. Um, I don't know. You tweet don't know, me yeah. and tell me who he talking about. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, I put Liz. Shut the hell up. How you gonna be mad at David? <laughs> shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Because I, I just can't wrap my brain around the fact that she's mad when she was manipulating the whole situation from the start. Like she wasn't the side chick. But again, that just that goes to show. No, let, let me tell. Let me let me say something else. The fact that Susan was this hurt and upset because of what went down with her and David, I understand that. And it threw her off of her game, and it knocked her wind, it knocked the wind out of her to the fact that to the point where she couldn't focus most of the time. Now she doesn't know that the side chick was Lizzie Bear. Wait till she find that exactly. out. Exactly. So now, when she finds out, are we going to do this again? Are we going to have this song and dance, blah, blah, blah? Or I'll save a prefer my, uh, prediction that I have. She will find out about Lizzie Beer and then someone else will step up and officially be the unofficial campaign manager. But well, it's going to knock the win out of her again. Was, uh, I don't believe that any were side chicks because there was no... There was no main. Yeah. Right. Well, you you, you know what I you mean. Know, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the jump off, the, the, yeah. the you know... In Susan's the, mind, the they were more than... Yeah. Susan had a different idea of what they were. Communicate, but, girl. Well, if you if you want to hear more about that, just go to last week when we went in. No, Susan. Oh, no, 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 Susan, just communicate, Man girl. With the shade? Um, <laughs> okay, so more of the debate um, before we move on from the debate. Uh, so I put Melly still in her own when she was doing the women are not their husband's keepers but what like we saw Susan stole the moment when she went into her whole story she did and her, her, her lies I just think uh, yeah we know it's like but I, I think it was a, a really great moment for her and you know like I said regardless of I believe that she did speak later and hopefully she did better in the debate but regardless of that fact that moment alone that's the moment that everybody will be talking about the next day so but I get what you're saying Bim. that doesn't make you the winner but yeah. For the show, you know, it is what it is. And remember who said she wanted debate? It was Sally, and Sally's rooting for her anyway, so but, Sally's kind of biased. <laughs> but, the, but the papers also, the, true. Yeah, the papers had it. And then yeah. they liked the, well, Ross Boss. Yeah. And then she had that David moment, so, you know. It, but it's easy for the papers and the media to say that she's the clear winner because there's more to talk about. Like, you, even if there's somebody else who made some valid points. With that story alone, that's like a that's a piece that people want to read. People love a hero you know story. I mean? Yeah, they do. So it's just easier for them to sell that story. Um, okay, so let's go to let's go to Susan. Susan, um, Olivia got this information from Alex Vargas, and we didn't know it was an envelope. And we said that maybe we thought that it was bogus and it was something fake or whatever it was, um, blank piece of paper, all this different stuff. So we find out that what's on the document <coughs> is that Susan. Um, was never married. They went to the Justice of Peace, OPA did, and they couldn't find the marriage certificate, so she was never actually married. First, they went to see if she had any veterans benefits to prove she was a thief by getting money from the government. Then they found out that Casey actually isn't uh, fathered by 
her pretend husband. Mm-hmm. Dude, that was a, it was a complicated story. Like, yeah. I mean, not complicated, but like, I understand why she wouldn't want to tell the public that. Because if you hear all that, you're like, what? God damn, is this a, <laughs> like, <laughs> a soap opera? <laughs> um, so anyway, so that's when it went downhill for Olivia because we all knew it was going to be bad when um, Melly was sitting in the chair looking all sad and Olivia says, you know, we're going to get you in the office hell or high water. Done. Mm-hmm. As soon as she said that, I was like, oh, God. White hat got doodle on it. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Oh my god. Trashed. Can you please tweet that? The white hat got doo doo on it. I can't. <laughs> I can't. But, like, I don't know. So then we just had the downfall of Liv. So, okay, so. Well, <sighs> since you said that we're going to speak about Susan, I'll just say this really quick. Um, I was bummed at the writing for Susan's backstory. For us to believe that she's this just very nice good honest lady and then she's hiding the secret it made me not like her but Why? that's because um she's a liar but are isn't everybody in politics a liar not not a uh, saved and sanctified uh susan ross but she doesn't really claim to be saved and sanctified. I just I had I didn't know I didn't have another word to choose besides no, no, saved and sanctified. But she came off as this like she's for the people, and because she's so forthright and and she's so honest, to me that wouldn't seem like that was a big deal. But I will give her props for her becoming vice president, and nobody found that information. Yeah, that's I mean I give that's you props true. on that. Well, this is my thing though. Could Susan, as a female candidate in any arena, where, whether it's the Senate, the House, vice presidency, presidency, could she say something that truthful to people? Even when Fitz was giving her that pep talk at the end, in the back of my mind, I was like, she can't do that. This isn't the same race that a man can run versus a woman. She cannot say, yes, I had an affair or, or I have a baby daddy. Now he's in drugs because he can pop for selling dope. And <laughs> I'm sorry. And this man wasn't my husband. But I've been telling y'all this for years. She can't do that. She could not be, have been honest. I believe in my heart of hearts. She could not have lived and stood in her truth and been elected to any type of office. As a woman, no. So I then, don't believe it. Okay, she and had I, to lie. And I get that. But when Fitz, when Fitz confronted her and said, you know, how do you want to tell the story? If she would have said what you said, then I would have been like, okay, I get it. But the fact that she was still like, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. She needed to say what you Writers, you hear that? That's what that's what she should have said. I, I, well, but on the flip, like, if... <laughs> The problem is, just think about what Melly said earlier when she talked about, uh, like, how she can't be separated from her husband. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not my husband. So, with Sally, not Sally, with Susan, as soon as that story came out, you wouldn't be able to separate. Like, the public wouldn't be able to separate that story. So, I'm with, I don't think there would be any way for them to... She erase that she, and she I don't think she would be able to come back from it there's nothing she could say I don't think so because once that information comes out then you become tabloid father like it, it, it's not no there's already enough people in this country who are racist and bigots and then the people who cannot <laughs> possibly imagine or fathom having a female president so those people are already struggling then you have people who are kind of on board with them. then as soon as that information comes out they're like oh hell no then so, she's single and dating and so then uh, that's another story then yeah. now she there's three men in her life god forbid that you date three men in your life and it doesn't matter how clean she was or how much she cares about the country or she's the most qualified candidate it it, it even think about the fact, remember right after um, right after the debate, when the headline was about her winning the debate, it was pictures of her and David. Yeah. Like, even with that, so I don't know, I don't think she could get away from it. But I will say, um, just quickly about Ronnie. So remember, Olivia went to the jail. Mm-hmm. Olivia started off, you know, kind of playing it nice and coy. And then when she went back... Right, like, like when right. she went back, I was like, "Bitch, sit down!" Like, what are you? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I don't mean to call her a bitch, but that moment she was just out of control. Like, in the Thank way, calm yourself. The way you. Huck was looking at her, like, like Huck was like, "Damn, you worse than me right now." Like, <laughs> so in that moment, there was just I just had a, a lot of problems with it. And then when she started talking about the contraband she could plant, she said, "Quinn, Quinn," like. A, like Olivia, Olivia, yes, Lord, Olivia turned into uh, Tony Soprano out here. Seriously, like, girl, bye. <laughs> like Ronnie looks scared to death. Poor Ronnie. I'll say this about Ronnie, or let me say this about Susan. Susan must got some good stuff because her men stay loyal. 
That's true. Yo, for <laughs> bro, like, yo. He is in. He was in jail for almost That's eleven true. years, true. and he's not going to rat out because she's a good person. And then David. After, but I she's will got say, she I, got the good good. Okay, okay, she might the have the good good. good but I will good. say, I will <laughs> say, it it will be different for me if I was in jail because of something that Susan did, and I didn't rat her out. But if I was in jail for something of my own doing, then I can't like what I'm was not in jail for again. Selling dope. By the yeah, way. so it's nothing that Susan did, and if you know that Susan's trying to run for president, like I'm, I'm sorry. I if he he seemed like a good simple guy, and he was just caught selling drugs. I don't think that he really wants to hurt her hmm, interesting a white guy goes to jail for 11 years of settling drugs no it's a it's a feet a couple in there no i will say this poor ronnie one two he also didn't snitch they said that when he got arrested they offered him a plea deal and he didn't snitch on yeah. the person that he could have snitched ronnie on to get less time so he's just a stand-up old school keep your mouth shut if you take the fall i'm taking the fall we need a meme uh hashtag good guy ronnie meme Oh, Ronnie. But then again, you put someone like that in a situation where you it's either snitch on the person that you care about or get be in jail for an extra 20 years. You know, like Olivia, I, I yeah. didn't like that. Olivia, come on. For Melly, and I wrote in my notes. Now, I have no problem with Melly and the show running for president. I have no problem. I think she's a smart woman. Maybe they'll make her uh, the candidate, the, the eventual nominee. Maybe they won't. But I don't have a problem with that. But my point is, Olivia is doing all of this for Melly? Melly Grant. Like, all of this, she is turning back into this 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 dark person, go, like getting in the trenches, doing all this. I, I see she did that for Fitz because she seemed to really believe in him, and they all did and that little the people at the table who set it up so he can win defiance. Mm -hmm. But do you feel that same way about Melly? I don't, I don't think, think so. I don't think it's for Melly though. I think it's for her. It's for her. To and do what? It's because right now she has so much pride invested in this because it's not Melly that she's worried about. Remember, Fitz is aligned with Susan. True. So she's trying to get back at him. Then her father is now aligned with Papa Pope plus Jake. So it's yeah. just for her, it's way more than just trying to win for Melly. She's trying to win to prove a point. Like mm -hmm. I'm Olivia Pope. I said right. I'm not with I'm not with Jake anymore. I'm not with Fitz anymore. I don't need my daddy no more. <laughs> like, yeah, sure. No, yeah. You I can agree. see her saying something like that. So yeah. I don't know. So um yeah, but it wasn't a good look. And then when actually I had to save for later, but we're going to jump into Olivia and Fitz since we're talking about it. <sighs> when <laughs> <laughs> when Quinn goes to Abby, first of all I love how she brought the coffee. Mm -hmm. When Quinn goes to Abby and she tells Abby what's going on and then we see Abby in the office and then they pan and we see one of the uh, Secret Service officers and then another and then we see Fitz. I think we all did like an eye roll. Just, just <laughs> the moment. Well, I definitely did not. And then he was petty as hell when he went into the office talking about something. I thought we were just visiting each other's offices now giving unwarranted advice. Like, <laughs> like, he had some good He had some good zingers. He did. He did have some good Good-bye. zingers. Let's keep it. What do you say? Let's keep it real? Let's, let's keep it. I thought we were keeping it real or something like that. She said fire whoever told you. <laughs> Say that, taught you to say that. Um, I don't know that moment in the office. Like, it's just I need Olivia to, and she. It looks like at the end of the episode, she started to listen, but that's only after Ronnie committed suicide. Poor Ronnie. <clears throat> that whole conversation with uh, Fitz and Liv in their in her office. You know how sometimes when um, when a woman catches a man. And then he goes after the girl and then the two girls, you know, one negative word becomes one thing and then they start fighting about something that is, has nothing to do with the situation. Mm -hmm. That's what that situation was with Fitz and Liv. They were going, what was supposed to be one topic, they went off on a tangent and then all of a sudden they just kept they just kept reading each other trying to you know trying to up each other on something personal that had nothing to do with why he was really there. And so I was just like, okay, this is boring but I I didn't think it was boring though I was just I think I was just annoyed with Liv in the moment just for, for what I we, what we were seeing in the episode I don't think it was necessarily them being in the room or whatever it was I will say I like that um, they had the conversation about defiance and they had a conversation about how he thinks he's a victim she doesn't think he was a victim she doesn't think he should have ever been in office All that needed to mm -hmm. that needed to happen um, what yeah it needed to happen but not at that moment when they're already 
when their purpose is to up each other because they didn't that wasn't a real conversation but i think it needed to happen always though, goes, though. Yeah. you know like think about it me and bam got in an argument and i was like you'll never take the trash out and bam was like but you'll never say nothing to trash you'll never ask me to take the trash out and then they were like hey your mama's stupid it's yeah. like you always yeah. throw you're waiting to throw <laughs> something in and you have to find in end, even if it has nothing to do with the argument. I'm not saying your mama's stupid. I don't know the lady. <laughs> However, people do that. They always be like, now I can just throw something in. I always hated your mouth. And then I you, can't. If that's what it seemed like. You got halitosis. Um <laughs> <laughs> No, I think it was I think it was good though because then it, it helped play later because it was those things that were for Olivia, she need to get that out and for Fitz he needs to hear it. But I think it was a reminder that um you know they do need to play this clean and then with ronnie's death that just solidified the fact that <clears throat> this isn't going to work if they continue to play dirty they can try it but it's going to get super messy and even with um with these two candidates they can try to play clean i don't know how long it's going to last because they're drinking their bourbon they're trying to act like everything's okay but i don't i don't think that the clean act is going to last very long with these two i don't either because you know if this is we're only dealing with melly and susan ross yeah. where there's hollis doyle yeah exactly. and then you got ike on the other side with edison if he make it alive yeah right. and you have cyrus mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah oh yeah this is so the only two people playing it clean are fitz and olivia at some point well maybe this pack is they're playing it clean with each other and then they're gonna play dirty with everybody else maybe because there's no way there's no way you can go up against cyrus papa pope and who who's, hollis doyle, and hollis doyle with clean? his billions of dollars let's talk about uh when? let's talk about cyrus and the vargas campaign um alex was looking good again this episode first of all um he was so with vargas we saw in the last episode that family trumps everything because frankie will only listen to his brother and he's pretty much has uh cyrus there as a prop and oh speaking of prop sorry <clears throat> before i forget when Susan was doing the interview and she said, David, you're just a prop, mm -hmm. that was a drop the so mic she moment. she killing David. That was, like, that was a stupid thing to say. Because why? Because she was still mic'd. Oh. You right. Oh, well. That, I, but he is he is right with that one because you the heard thing what is... Jesse, I'm just... You remember but what... But you know what, though? What? Think about it. Susan, America... And women love... Don't nobody like a damsel in distress. And if she is Mike, yes, they can spin it where this this relationship is a fraud, but they can spin it also where, yep, you a prop. I'm the boss. Yeah. I am the boss. You are just a little boy toy. Stand right here, look pretty, and I'm gonna keep doing me. Then she okay, could do a commercial with um Rick Ross and be like, Susan Ross, the boss, vote for me. Huh? I can't. I can't. All right, so seriously, back to Vargas. Um, so when Vargas uh got the information from Liv. I liked the banter that Liv and Vargas had um, on the steps when mm -hmm. they were talking. And he was saying, she was like, I need more information. You didn't give me this. And he's like, oh, you mean the baby daddy? That you didn't? And then she gave him the information about um, the head nurse who was at the facility. The twist was all of Liv's stuff worked out until Ronnie committed suicide. But then with Vargas, they leaked the information. Frankie made his comments um, or lack thereof. And then it came out from the head nurse directly saying he was never in this facility. That's horrible that they would try to damage somebody's name. I feel sorry for the family. He was like, <laughs> did, somebody she say, said <laughs> did, did, did you even know him or something <laughs> like that? Um, so when he went back to, um, when he went back to, the offices, um, Frankie Vargas's offices, and then Frankie was dismissing him. I was like, damn. And I don't know if you guys were thinking this. I thought that Papa Pope did it. Because remember, and we're going to talk about Papa Pope and that conversation that he had with Edison. I thought that after that conversation, we said, I'm going to handle it. I thought that Papa Pope did it. And then we found out at the end of the episode that Cyrus did it. Yeah. And I was like, damn, I Cyrus definitely still got it. thought, yeah, he still got it right. I definitely thought it was it was Papa Pope because, you know, he was like, you stay over here. He cussed Edison out and we'll get to that. He read him for filth. <laughs> but... I was pleased that it was Cyrus and Cyrus yeah. got to it. I was like, yeah. Because, you know, if Cyrus was... He was starting to look weak. He was starting to look a little simp. And Cyrus, if anybody, if you can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody, you gonna, t Cyrus is going to be in the mix. Mm -hmm. And I started to feel bad. Or, or Even I wrote in my notes, Cyrus should step down, let um, Frankie's brother ruin it, and then come back in. Because mm -hmm. I was like, this is stupid. This yeah. is getting dumb. You being this little puppet and, and you being out the loop. I... Um I didn't think that it would be Cyrus, but at the same time, for some reason, I didn't think that it would be 
Papa Pope. Um, or actually maybe I, I did maybe think uh, a little more towards Cyrus because there was just a couple of of, of, of little uh, balls that were dropped. You know, when he called him old school, like I think in this episode, Cyrus played his cards in the sense where <clears throat> he didn't be the aggressive person that he normally does. He realized that he's dealing with an old, with the younger dude, new school versus old school. Mm -hmm. And I think he took that to his advantage. So he was like, he just kind of watched him a little bit and, and so forth. And he's kind of watched from afar. And then, you know, when I saw Tom, I was like, okay, they're up to something. Yeah, well, you Cyrus know Cyrus and Tom up to something for real, though, behind right? the scenes. I think, personally, um, because I always keep going back and forth, back and forth with this uh, relationship, but I think, I somehow think Tom is is doing something against Cyrus and maybe it's for Papa Pope. Like I, feel, I would believe that because Papa, remember, they were uh, no. in cahoots with each other. Yeah, so I, I think... I think Tom, whatever he's doing, I think it's a. I think he's playing Cyrus. But what interest does Papa Pope have in Cyrus right now? No, I'm just saying because if he, if Tom, if he can somehow, if he has, if Cyrus has Tom in his court and Papa Pope is still controlling Tom, then that can sabotage that campaign. Oh, that's true. Yeah, and that's all he needs because if if Frankie Vargas really is like the candidate that's going to be the Democratic nominee, mm -hmm. and then all he has to do is worry about his candidate Edison on the Republican side if he can get him through and sabotage everybody else well Edison's a Democrat yeah yep. he is mm -hmm. yep because remember he wasn't at the debate you're yeah. right you're right so, okay well in that case then then all he has to do is worry about getting Frank out of the way he can control Olivia because mess with her brain um Hollis I'm sure he has something on him and then Fitz and Lizzie Bear he can play them Lizzie He's not that good. Yeah, so that's why I think Tom is is on Ike's side because hmm. he's too. You can't. You know, he is a secret service. Yeah. So you know, he's had tons of military experience. So for him to play like he is gay or like he's like in Cyrus, that's that's easy for him. And he was working with Papa Pope for a long time up yeah. until now. <clears throat> right. Because be even him working with Cyrus, it's like how the hell y'all link up? True. Yeah. It's like what when y'all meet? Let's talk about. Edison uh, and Papa Pope and Jake in the kitchen eating fried chicken. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was telling him that fried chicken looked good. I really want to go but, to Ralph's now and get some fried chicken. But the way that he was eating that chicken, watching the whole entire thing go down. He was, it looked hella succulent. Well, it was, <laughs> I mean, boy, he, was, he was just tearing that chicken up just slowly. You can tell it was good. No, Ralph sells uh, like a eight piece for like seven ninety nine. No, but you know who's better than Ralph's? Albertsons. Oh, that's true. But I don't have no Albertsons. Is there Albertsons near um, in the valley? G Glendale. No, oh, I can't be going fine. all over to Glendale for no fried chicken. Um, but anyway, so this might have been one of my favorite monologues from Papa Pope ever. Like, the way he just shut Edison down. Poor Edison. Again, not saying, yes, Papa Pope is the most evil man <laughs> we know on yeah. this show. But you can't stand up to him. You look like a simp, a sucker MC when he was shutting you down. How you gonna be somebody's president? And Papa Pope, you picked Edison? That's your guy? That's but your you know, guy? But remember, you know he picked him because he can control him. Yeah, but he, if, so Edison, you, my thing is, Papa, yeah, you can control him. But Edison might buckle under somebody else too. Like, he didn't mm. seem very... When he got when he read him that way, I took it as yeah, Papa Pope can read anybody for filth. But out of everybody, Papa, you picked him. <clears throat> I don't know. I but see, nobody else. I agree. He can buckle on somebody else, but after that, he he not gonna try. He Do not gonna try. Be a boss. Um. Okay. Well, I thought differently about the situation. What'd you say? What'd you think? I was like, I right, shut the fuck up. Somebody just shoot his <laughs> ass. Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you you know just you know the. You know, first of all, he, he looks like uh, he looks like an old church deacon. Okay, let's just it's, shut up. God damn, just shut the fuck up. Just shoot oh him and kill him. Damn. I just damn. can't. I can't stand. You know. Oh my he god. Just, he runs his mouth. All he does is run his mouth. I just just shoot his ass. Wow. Just well, shoot Edison him. ain't popping a cap in nobody. But you know what? But one thing that I, I tell I, I really feel. I won't call Edison. <laughs> I won't call him a punk for what he did. But I there was something in Edison's eyes where I felt that we're going to see a more different side. 
Oh, he look, he's about to cry to me. I thought he looked like a sucker <laughs> MC. And when he there was, was getting yeah. cussed out, I was like, oh, Edison's He dumb. couldn't even speak. Yeah, he but, was like... Well, maybe I'm just hoping, but for me, I felt like there was something... I see more to it. I see more to it um, with Edison, and I'm hoping that um, that he would, you know, get some balls and and go harder. Well, out again, Edison, because no, there has to be a reason that they brought him back. I like. I'm hoping that there's more to it that he's not just going to just sucker out to Reverend Ike that soon and that quick. Well, everybody was. I mean, who wouldn't suck out to him? Based on his character mm -hmm. and the power that he has had, yeah, you... I mean, who wouldn't suck out? I Let's quickly touch on how he said, don't you ever... He said, keep my daughter's name out That's of your mouth. Oh, yeah. You better tell him. Even though... Him and Olivia have the relationship, and I know I'm the one sometimes that's like, uh, like, you know, I'm back and forth with their relationship. He's right. At the end of the day, that's my daughter. And Edison, you're not going to be in my kitchen mm -hmm. just saying what you want to say about my child. Shut your ass up before I pop you. And then Edison did look like, he looked like he was wearing a pamper, and then he just peed in it. Or something else. Die, Reverend. What? Uh, remember in a remember remember in a different world. Die, just die, die. just die. That's you remember what, that scene, remember. Diane Carroll? That's what Reverend I can die, do. I'm just sick of him. Die. I'm not sick of you, Reverend uh, Papa Pope Rowan. I like that character. And when he said, "Should you ever be so unwise as to forget who the real boss is, Meridian Terrace will be the last of your words." I was like, "Oh, Kill I love him. him. I love him." So hopefully he does not die. He can't die. He's a series regular no, now. He, he just got he's not gonna die. But I just, just shut up. Oh my goodness, man! He I gets can't. on my nerves. <laughs> I can't. I All can't right. stand preachers who love to preach long sermons. You know, we already been in church two hours, and then you are gonna preach for another hour? That Sit is down. true. That's why I love my dad. He kept it tight. <laughs> <laughs> less than 30 minutes unless like a special occasion but less than 30 minutes if we start church at 11 we were for sure out by one at the latest mm. oh okay that's that a good church mm -hmm. it was united methodist but your dad mo he mod like your dad is emil's dad is he modern like he just i don't know i love emil's parents i can't okay so let's go into melly yo so they finally gave marcus something to do y'all Finally, he got something to do. He was mad about it, though. He was mad about it. He hates Melly. Why I gotta go on the road? Why can't you send Quinn? Why can't you send Huck? I was like, what if you don't shut up and just go? Just get well, on the flight. Well, at least he had a voice, you know. Yeah. Well, take it's a take the trip. Like, shut up, Marcus. What's he gonna do otherwise? Metal. Because don't nobody want your help at the office, apparently. And you, you gonna, you gonna, uh, be the, you gonna goon? Like you gonna be the goon? Nope. No. Nope. So just go. And can't nobody else go. So when he, when we went on the road, we saw that uh, they went to Jimmy Kimmel. Nice cross promotion, ABC. What a shocker! Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Um, they went to Jimmy Kimmel, and they're gonna have Melly read mean tweets. And they read one of the tweets. He's like, "Can we get meaner?" <clears throat> <laughs> and what I love about this scene was. It was nice to finally see somebody besides Olivia talk to Melly the way she needs to be talked to. And it was nice because remember how we said, um, or I, I said like a couple weeks ago when Olivia went and talked to Fitz that mm -hmm. who else would be the right person to talk to him? I felt like in this situation, not saying he's necessarily the right person to talk to her, but just imagine if some random person from After Buzz came up to me that I don't know and told me how to host a show. And I was like, who are you? But if they had good points, I would listen because I'm like, who is this random? As opposed to if you guys said something and you sit next to me every week, I might listen, but I might not take it the same way. Mm -hmm. So that's why I loved how he spoke his mind, told her what she needed to hear. She could reflect on that. And then we went in for the cut in the second time. And he talked about the high <laughs> booty story. Yo, that high booty story stole the show. The Hashtag high booty that stole the show. But it, it was good how he put a personal touch on it. And, and, and then I liked, basically he was saying, Millie, everything ain't about you. Everybody got haters. Shut up. Jack, just relax. And, and if you're president, you got to deal with that. Like who? Exactly. Half the country will, will literally hate your guts. That's how it goes now. So, Melly, you mad about a couple people um, tweeting you and that no one likes me. They hate me. They hate everybody. Yeah. They hate everybody. So, I don't know what to tell you. And she's, you know, she's out of touch from the real world. She is. She's out of touch. She's completely out of touch. Because if she, if she knew... If she knew how it worked, mean tweets makes any celebrity likable. Whenever I watch it, I'm like, oh. 
which then makes me question because last week she was like yeah i know how much gas is and you know it made it seem like you know she was very into what's what's going on but when it comes to the other aspect of politics and so forth and just take a look at what's going on now of how you have people that are literally fighting because you know someone decides to wear donald trump shirt like she should be more aware of what's going on as far as tweets and so forth so to me that seemed like marcus said she was very um spoiled that's her team though because let's really think about it let's think about uh, barack and michelle <clears throat> a lot of the times you can tell people are telling them what's current they're mm-hmm. not they don't they don't have time mm-hmm. to do it so melly should have had somebody on her staff like a marcus or whoever olivia's team to feed her this information because you they can't even have phones yeah they mm-hmm. just now started to be able to have phones to just be on twitter kicking it she wouldn't know she wouldn't know that and even if she did melly's personality wouldn't do that anyway so i blame olivia and them because quiet is kept well mark will know it's yeah. really olivia and melly there is she doesn't have does she have an assistant no she ain't got no she has nobody well, you're supposed to have uh, people working when you, you're a senator. You have a you have a little team. Hmm, where are they? Hmm. But what I didn't like about um what I didn't like about Melly and the Marcus storyline is the story dragged out too long. That's something like someone of Melly's caliber. When you get to when you because I've, I've I've done the Jimmy Kimmel show before, and so like when you when you do something like that, someone like her, you literally fly, you land, you get to, you get there, you do what you have to do. They wouldn't have her waiting around all day just to do mean tweets. So it's like, you know, th- it just it dragged on a little too long for me. It didn't seem like all day. I think it's just the way they edited it because it, it, she was in the hallway. They gave her the briefing. And then the next shot after he read her in the hallway, they were in the uh, makeup room. Mm-hmm. So I think it was just it, it may have seemed longer just because it, it seemed longer yeah. only because the other scenes that we were yeah. seeing with other storylines had expanded throughout the day. Right. So it, it just it dragged a little too long for me. No, I see, I see what you mean with that. But um, hopefully... You know, hopefully we get some story with Marcus. I'm going to save, uh, I'll save what I'm going to save for predictions. Um, I think we covered everything. Can you guys think of anything we didn't? Mm, no, I mean, we... I think I think that's everything. And if we miss anything, then you know what to do. Yeah, Continue that conversation online at, uh, I will say our Twitter, at Addy Mill and this junior. At Canelia. At Bam Erickson. Sorry, that was impromptu. Okay, let's go into the uh, cold piece of the week from Cornelia. What was that? We... That's probably still sunny. Ah! Cold piece of the week for Scandal episode 16 of season 5 goes to hell. I don't know who the hell gets the damn cold <laughs> piece of the week. I could not think of someone I did not want to give to Papa Pope because... You know, he always reads someone for filth. I did not want to give it to Liv for being uh, the bad guy because I've given it to her before. And quite frankly, I just didn't know who to give it to. So y'all tell me who gets cold piece of the week for this episode. However, I do want to give cold piece et of the week one to Jake's Fried Chicken. Because I look, like I said, it looked hella succulent. I don't even eat meat. And I was like, that chicken looks really delicious. It just looks crisp, like fried to the crisp. Like it was it was juicy. The inside was done. You could tell it was like hot. You could. He heated it up. And then the second cold piece goes to Marcus's high booty. <laughs> that thing poking. <laughs> he said it. I didn't. <laughs> But now, if I bump into him on the street in real life, I'm going to look behind and be like, that thing is broken. Shout out to you, buddy. So, let us know who you guys think Cold Peace and Cold Peace Et of the week should be. Hit us up on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook using hashtag Cold Peace and hashtag Cold Peace Et. Uh, what was up? also funny about when he was talking about the high booty is how he then arched his butt yeah, and kind of threw it. it. Yeah. That thing poking. <laughs> Gotta see it. Can't talk about it and not be about it. Okay, um, let's go into predictions. And now, your After Buzz TV predictions. Um, I'll start with my, my quick prediction. Um, it's not really prediction, but it kind of is. Y'all remember... When we were introduced to Marcus after the lawn chair episode, you know, he was, when he was running for mayor, he was, got caught sleeping, or he was sleeping with. That white, that, that white, white lady. Because mm-hmm. they made it a thing. Mm-hmm. So he with Melly now. Melly got a high booty too. Oh, you think him and Melly, oh. I'm just oh, saying that, so, could, oh. that could be a potential storyline if they, if they play it right. So 
We'll see. Even if it's just a quick affair or a kiss or something, I don't know. I see something happening with that, especially now that he can make Melly <coughs> laugh and get her more likable side out. Melly may need to get. Think about it. Melly need to get some. True. That's why she's so high strung. She needs to get some. She hasn't been getting it for fits for years. She had a uh, what's his name, Andrew. Now he mm-hmm. got a stroke. And, yeah, he got a stroke, and so what? She didn't get it from nowhere. The vibrator can only do so much. You, I think you probably. No, that's a good prediction. I know. I like that. Me too. And that thing poking. So you know. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> my, my prediction. Go, go ahead, man. <laughs> so, what is Melly gonna do? She gonna? She's gonna get a little something. She gonna get something. Then she gonna be like, yeah. But, but you talking about the butt, like as if? No, I'm just saying that you know he already like some women like to grab a nice. He already like you know yeah we yeah well we'll know if you turn around looking like a damn (laughs) box of Ziploc bags. Don't nobody want no flat back out here that long back. Wait 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 wait, Cornelia say booty like you said that booty (laughs) that booty. Don't nobody want nobody with a long back. She probably I I I I wouldn't mind that prediction. That would be that would be an interesting twist in the show. I my prediction is that Lizzie Bear will be out sooner than later. Mm. Um, what's her name? Susan is going to be hella tainted. Fitz is going to step up as the campaign manager, but he can't go on the road. But he's going to be officially try to be the one running the show. Hmm. Um, unless like somebody super gangster comes back and runs it like Leo, you know, whoever. But <clears throat> I miss Leo. It, wasn't, it was a nice. I see him at the gym sometimes. Really? Mm-hmm. You be seeing other, what's his name? Oh Who? boy. Who? From the other show. Oh yeah, I see him. He was there today. What other show? We'll tell you, man. Yeah. Okay. He there all the time. That thing poke it. Oh, I saw another. Um, well, I'll tell you all okay. too. Okay. Everybody pre- be at my what's gym. What's your prediction, y'all? man? There's a lot at your gym. Yeah. Um. Um, I don't have a prediction. I just think that um, with the with this election coming up, I'm hoping that it's a good hot mess. Mm, I agree. Mm-hmm. I just I need it to be just messy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good. No, you're right. And I predict that next week. No, I'm not gonna say it. I'll say that for offline. Oh. Uh, I'll say for. I'm, let me just say this. Not a prediction. I just hope next week is good. I, I've said this in the past. I don't yeah. like when they hype it up. I don't like that. Like, I don't need you to say it's going to be an oh my gosh moment because that's like if you tell somebody, oh, you got to see that movie. It's so good. Then you go watch it and you have all these high expectations. You're like, it was all right. Mm-hmm. Well, let me let me also just say this. If next week's episode does not live up. Okay, what bothered me about this is they, they, they threw all prior episodes. Like great episodes. All the great episodes. And then all they said is basically Olivia is going to turn up next week. That's not a fucking preview. <laughs> it's not. It's not a preview. Go turn up. Well, maybe it's a good thing they didn't show us details and they just said it's gonna be because I didn't I, look. I didn't really want to see details of the episode. I'm just saying I don't need you to tell me this is gonna be a shocker. Because once you say that and there's no shocker, then people are gonna be like, you keep lying to me. So hopefully, hopefully, um, you know, it will be a great episode. And yeah, I think Sophia will be back next week, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Um, all right, guys. So let's uh, go ahead and tell everybody where you can be found on social media and whatnot in life. And you can find me on all social media at Bam Erickson. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Canelia. I am now on Snapchat. Please follow hey. me at Canelia1. I'm also going to be performing at the Comedy Union on April 6th. Hey. I will be at Flappers Comedy Club on April 8th. Hey. I will be at Flappers again on April 22nd. Hey. And I will be at Ice House on April 23rd. Hit me okay. up online for ticket info. Um, and for me, you can find me at Emil Inish Jr. on everything except Snapchat. You can find me at Emil Inish Jr. 31. And if you need an extra shot of conversation, hit us up. Check out Happy Hour, a shot of conversation where we talk about all the latest topics and news. Um, quick question. Why is yours Cornelia 1? Because mine's 31 because I forgot my password. Well, I'm the one. only Cornelia and it wouldn't let it. Ha- it forced me to put the 1. Really? Yes. What you mean that? Oh, I'm sorry. If you're if you're the only Cornelia, it said it was weak or something. Some BS. How are you gonna say your name weak? It says something where I was like, well. well All right. Uh, anyway, guys, make sure you follow us on social media and like we said, wish Sophia a happy birthday or early birthday. I don't know if her birthday is actually. It's on the first. On the first. Oh, it's tomorrow. It's so make sure hours. make sure you tweet uh, Sophia a big huge happy birthday and that you love her and we will see you guys same time same place next week. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil. Svitek and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff. We would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. 
to watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. Hashtag high booty. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.